Hi guys, my name is Prakash and welcome to Rodha. So again, we just uh, will just continue the series of algebra practice session. Okay, so in the in previous practice sessions of algebra and numbers, we are continuing it, and we have done some more than twenty five very nice questions. I think around thirty. I think okay. So those thirty questions get all those concepts. Very good questions there. Okay, and let's add one good more question in this uh, algebra practice session. Okay, a very good question here. Look at this question, guys. This question says that. K is equal to x four plus one by x four plus one upon x square plus x square one by x square plus one, where x is less than zero. We need we need to find the range of k here. Okay, so k is equal to x four plus one by x four plus one, where x is less than zero, and what do we need to find the range of k here? So now let's solve it, guys. Okay, so obviously we'll just try to factorize uh, or simplify a bit actually. Okay, so let's see what we can simplify here. I'll write x eight. Plus x four, uh, I think, right? Plus one upon I can write here x four plus x square plus one, and this will be like uh, it will be x square upon x raised to four. Correct. So x square upon x raised to four, right? Now, if you further simplify it, so basically, see what is what I'm trying to do actually. Uh, I will try to just uh, get this numerator in a form here. Get this numerator in a form here, such that this a uh, denominator and some part of numerator gets cancelled. Okay, so I can further factorize it, right? Because it is quite higher power, and to get the value of range range of k in the higher powers could be a difficult task, right? Just try to simplify the powers actually. Okay, so to factorize it further, what I can actually do is I need to do something in x raised to four form. Okay, so what I'll do, uh, basically I can see that I, it can get it can come to ultimately this form, right? For example, x raised to four is square plus or minus twice x raised to four plus one. So a square plus two ab kind of form, right? So basically, if what I'll do here, I'll just write, I'll just add x four and subtract s four, x four. So in this, in this, basically, once I add x four, okay, x eight plus, uh, it becomes twice x four, x raised to four plus one and minus x raised to four divided by x four plus x square. Plus one, okay. So here in numerator, I can basically write this as x four is square plus two x four plus one, right? So what I can write here, I can write this as x four plus one whole square. So I can write this as x four x raised to four plus one whole square. Okay. So let's write this, guys. So once I write this in the form of what? X raised to four plus one whole square minus x raised to four divided by, okay. Divided by x raised to four plus x square plus one. Now I can get this actually this is x x four right? So I can get this in the form of what? I can just get this in the form of a square minus b square also. So for that I basically need to change that x square x raised to four as x square again whole square like that. Okay. So once I do this guys, so what it actually becomes now? It becomes x now a square minus b square is what a plus b into a minus b. So I can write in the form of what x four plus x square. Oh sorry, x four plus one minus x square. Okay, so x four plus x square plus one into x four uh, minus x square plus one divided by x four plus uh, x square plus one. Okay, and of course. This into one by x square will come here. This part, right? So of course, into one by x square here. Okay. Now this part actually gets cancelled here. So what I'm getting here now. So if you see here, guys, you'll get that x square minus one plus one by x square. Okay. And that actually becomes. You can write this as. You can and you know that you have to find the range of k, right? So try to get in the form of x plus one by x, right? So if I try to get in the form of x plus one by x, I can quickly write this as x plus one by x whole is square. Minus one minus two, that basically becomes x plus one by x whole square minus three. Okay, so basically this my whole expression changes changes to x plus one by x whole square minus three. Correct. So I hope you are clear with this step. No, x plus one by x x square plus one by x square is equal to x plus one by x whole square minus two. Okay, so this becomes minus three, right? So basically, I know what. Okay, so once you look at this expression, guys, x plus one by x whole square. So obviously, for this x plus one by x, its maximum value will tend to plus infinity, right? 
because I can have any negative value of x. There's no range. X is negative, right? I can put any negative value, है ना? And it can go to that negative square will become positive. So it can go to plus infinity, right? That minimum value. So I know that x plus one by x. Its minimum value occurs at when? At what value? Occurs at what value? At x equal to minus one. Occurs at uh, what value? X equal to minus one, right? That means at x equal to minus one, this becomes minus one plus one by minus one whole square minus three. That is minus one and minus one two or uh, square four minus three is one, right? Basically, its minimum its minimum value is one, okay, and its maximum value is plus infinity, right? So that's why the range here includes to the range here k belongs to what one to infinity. This should be the answer, okay? So basically, the minimum value is minus one here, right? And we know that x plus one by x. Uh, it's it's is always either for positive value it is either greater than equal to two or for all negative value it is always less than equal to minus two. Okay, so this is the funda behind this question, right? So main part in this question was this factorization part. Okay, very important is factorization part here. How to factorize is actually to get this. Ah, uh, so it's very very good thing, right? Just add this knowledge to your armory. Okay, and uh, you can have this. Uh, you can use this in any exam of maybe CAD, ZAD, IFT coming up, right? You can use this funda also. Okay. Now let's solve one more question, guys. Okay. Okay. The next question here says that uh, again, it, this question has come in come in CAD uh, two times previously or uh, same similar pattern, right? So basically, you have, to, you have to just change the data here. P, Q, and R are distinct numbers. Are distinct numbers. Satisfying okay, so let's move to the next question, guys. So this says that P, Q, and R are distinct numbers. Okay, this question, this kind of question has appeared in, appeared in CAT previously twice on the similar pattern. Okay, so are distinct numbers satisfying? So just Change the data actually. Okay, I'll just change the data. Satisfying two raised to one by p, then three is equal to three raised to one by q is equal to five raised five seventy six raised to one by r. Okay, so just two raised to one by p equal to three raised to one by q equal to five seventy six raised to one by r. I need to find the value of what is the value of r by three p plus q. This is the question. Find the value of r by three p plus q. Okay, so you can just try to relate this, uh, relate these numbers here. Okay, now if I try to uh, solve this question, okay, so initially for at how to attack such questions, right? So for attacking such questions, actually, you just equate all to k. Two raised to one by p is equal to three raised to one by q is equal to five seventy six raised to one by r, and equate this to k. Okay, once you equate this to k, actually, so what you'll get here. You'll get that okay. Uh, some k raised to p is equal to two. If I take, if I multiply both p power p power both sides, basically if I take power p both sides, right? Then we have k raised to q is equal to three, and then we have k raised to r is equal to five seventy six. Okay. So from this p, from this p uh, and q basically. So from this now it's funda is like from this two and three, I'm trying to get five seventy six here. Okay. So how you how do you get five seventy six from two and three actually? Can you just see this? Uh, two right yeah. So basically, what is five seventy six? If you see, so five seventy six is something uh twenty four square, right? That is two cube into three square, correct? Once it is two cube into three square, that becomes basically two raised to six into three square. Okay, that means this is five seventy six, right? So how do you get this five seventy six? Two raised to six into three square. What is two here? Two is k raised to p. So k raised to p. This is two. So two raised to six into three is square. What is three here? K raised to q into three is square. That is k raised to q is square. So is equal to five seventy six. Is equal to what? K raised to r. Okay. So that's it, right? That's the major part you have to understand. Every time you have to relate with the numbers, right? So this kind of question you have to relate with numbers, basically. So any relation, relation of any two will always be come down to third one. Actually, will always come down to third one. Yeah.
Fine. So let's move on. Let's see. So we have got this k power p six k power uh, k q square r right. Let's solve it actually. So what you can write here k raised to six p plus two q is equal to k raised to r. That means now I can just equate guys. So six p plus two q is equal to r. So we need to find the value of r by three p plus q. Okay. So obviously, uh, if I take this as common, right? Okay. So r by uh, two I think can take common here. That is three p plus q is equal to one. Okay. That means I can actually write that now. R by three p plus q is equal to two. So two is the answer. That's it. Okay. So again, uh, this is this is a perfectly calculable question. And this previous one was very good question. Two very good question we discussed, right? So we'll continue this algebra practice session, guys. Okay. Keep on studying. and all the best try right? prepare work very hard okay thank you for watching